Hi, I'm your host, Supnil Bharti, and welcome to our series on tech predictions for 2021. Our next oracle is Donald Fisher, CEO and co-founder of Tidelift. Donald, first of all, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, glad to be here. Uh, before I ask you to pick up your crystal ball and share your predictions, can you please tell me a bit about the company itself? Sure, happy to. So uh, Tidelift uh, partners with the independent creators of open source projects to create customizable catalogs of open source components that just work. Um, and by that, we mean um, the open source projects that these maintainers created, they receive comprehensive security updates, they're actively maintained, uh, the licensing information is all complete and accurate with additional guarantees uh, on top of what would come with your standard open source uh, licenses. And we work directly with the maintainers uh, of a ton of uh, popular application development packages to make that possible. Uh, for example, in the JavaScript, Java, PHP, Ruby, Python, and .NET ecosystems. Now, Donald, it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and tell me what predictions do you have for 2021? My first prediction is uh, that uh, software supply chain security is going to be a major issue in 2021, as it has been in the closing days of 2020. Um, and I believe that open source supply chain security is going to move to the forefront of that conversation. So, uh, you know, the software supply chain security in general is now a front page of the New York Times story. It's a White House situation room uh, topic uh, in recent days. Um, and while a lot of the recent activity has involved, uh, you know, famously proprietary software, Open source is still software, it's not immune to these um, kinds of issues. Now, open source has some uh, you know, uh, ways that it, it's sort of better uh, prepared than uh, proprietary software in some ways that it's, it's maybe more exposed. Uh, you know, on the one hand, uh, there's the sunlight principle, the many eyes principle for, of open source where you know, when it's out there in the open, everybody can see what's going on. On the other hand, there's, there's fewer gates uh, to prevent somebody from modifying software in open source. So, as a result, I think organizations are going to be putting more and more focus on the um, security and integrity of the open source components that go into their um, software applications. The next one is uh, diversity and inclusion. So we, we uh, in our conversations, find uh, that diversity and inclusion are a top of mind issue uh, for many of our uh, customers uh, and prospects. And uh, the organizations that we're talking to aren't just thinking about this uh, within the four walls of their own enterprise, they're also interested in what their suppliers are doing from a diversity and inclusion perspective. Um, you know, there was a recent Linux Foundation uh, report that showed that in the open source world, over 90% of open source contributors are male. Um, there's a lot of work to be done there. Um, and one of the things that we've heard a lot of interest from our um, the organizations that we engage with is in helping to make open source software uh, more diverse and inclusive. Uh, and we think we have a, there's a really interesting way to do that, which is to make it easier for open source maintainers to participate in open source projects. And one way to do that is by paying them uh, to do work on open source projects. Um, when there's actual payment for open source work, it, that is one way of leveling the playing field so that more folks can participate in it. Um, so on the whole, diversity and inclusion, we think is gonna be a top of mind issue uh, going continuing into 2021. The next one is, uh, I believe that remote first organizations have become the rule rather than the exception, uh, especially in tech. Um, you know, here at Tidelift, we've been remote first from the start. Uh, in fact, of our four co-founders, uh, we're spread across three corners of the US at least. Um, and we find uh, among uh, the you know, uh, tech workforce, remote is now the expectation, no longer the exception. Um, there are great upsides that come with that as we've all uh, experienced some of during 2020. Um, the ability to access global talent. Uh, in a lot of ways, there's, uh, uh, it's an improvement from a um, uh, fairness and equity standpoint as well, because more people from different backgrounds and different situations can participate. Um, on the other hand, there are challenges, as I think we've also learned uh, during 2020, especially organizations that were thrust into remote work, uh, ill-prepared or without experience. Um, you know, it's important to have very intentional communication to ensure ongoing alignment, um, organizations I've seen uh, have, many of them have struggled to adopt asynchronous uh, work patterns. Uh, and of course, there's all these new tools and platforms uh, that we have, we're getting to know how to use them well. But, you know, my, my viewpoint is uh, 2021 is just going to see a continuation of this uh, phenomenon. There won't be a substantial re retreat to, uh, from uh, remote work, at least in tech. The next one relates to uh, the phenomenon of managed services and a a new way that we're seeing organizations are prepared to consume uh, managed services related to software, and that's around 
open source software. So, you know, back in 2006, people thought it was crazy to offload um, responsibilities of running your data center and uh, managing your core IT systems to a third party like Amazon or later cloud providers. Um, now, organizations that aren't already doing that are being left behind. Um, and we think the next wave of managed services will be around open source software and getting all of the hard work of managing and governing your open source off of your organization's plate. In many ways, this parallels uh, core IT hardware infrastructure. It's a totally generic task uh, governing these third party open source components. Um, but historically, organizations have been taking on most of that burden themselves. We think that more organizations will uh, take a managed open source approach. Um, that's one of the key things that Tidelift offers in our product offerings, but we're not the only ones. There's also similar, uh, similarly framed offerings from organizations like VMware's Tanzu um, and others. So 2021 prediction, managing open source is going to turn into more of a managed service and less of a DIY effort. Donald, thanks for sharing this prediction. Now, if you can also tell me what is going to be the focus of the company in, in 2021? Uh, our focus at Tidelift in 2021 is continuing to build out our network of partnered open source maintainers. Those are the original creators of so many of these open source packages and projects and frameworks that we all use every day and form the bulk of most of the applications, uh, custom applications that are being built today. Um, and we're working with our, our partnered maintainers to deliver those uh, in the form of what we call uh, catalogs of known good open source components. So we'll be um, you know, coming out with more catalogs, covering more and more uh, territory, increasing the, um, the types of uh, guarantees and assurances and uh, standards that those open source uh, components comply with. Uh, more to come from Tidelift in 2021. Donald, thanks for sharing these uh, predictions with us. I would love to have you back on the show in 2021 just to see how many of your predictions uh, turned out to be true and, of course, to get your predictions for the next year. Thank you. I'd love to do the scorecard uh, report out at the end of the year. Thanks so much for the time.